This soft, mushy, kind of blurry image is the result of not understanding the order in which DaVinci Resolve processes pixel resolution between the different pages and effects. And now this is the same high-res photo scaled up without breaking any concatenation to retain the absolute highest quality. So if you ever work with 6K, 8K, even 12K footage that's larger than your timeline, this is a must-watch tutorial to help you retain the highest quality and sharpest pixels using DaVinci Resolve. The bottom of DaVinci Resolve has page navigation that goes edit first, then fusion, then color, because that's the order that you make a video. But the pixels follow this order. They actually start in fusion, then they go to the edit page, and then to color and delivery and so on. And the reason that's so important is there's a lot of nuance in the edit page, and that's where timeline resolution kicks in. After timeline resolution kicks in, you're essentially baking your video down to that resolution that the timeline is. And everything in red in here is determined by your timeline resolution, which means you may be baking down your high-res material and making it soft when you want to blow it up. Oh, and if you think that edit page inspector setting under the retiming and scaling panel there, where it says scaling and you can choose fit, crop, fill, stuff like that, that that actually matters when you use the zoom controls over there? They don't. <laughs> Resolve is much smarter than that. But the order of operations for so many other things do matter when you want to scale an image up, so let's take a look. So to best illustrate this, I took a photo of this sheet of music right here. It's actually pretty high res. If you go to the file tab, you'll see it's 7008 by 4672 pixels. And to make it really obvious for YouTube, I changed my timeline, timeline settings resolution to 720p. So the idea is you have a lower resolution timeline than your source material. So the first most obvious right way to scale this up is just click on the clip, make sure it's selected in orange, go to the inspector up here, and use your video transform zoom controls. Now this specific clip doesn't match the aspect ratio of the timeline, so if you wanted to fill those bars up right away, you can come down to retiming, scaling, scaling, and then change this to fill, because right now it's set to fit. Uh, but none of these options down here, you know, you could set it to crop, whatever you want, are not gonna affect your ability to access those pixels if you change your zoom controls to something crazy, like let's go up uh, to 10, and you can see we've got lots of detail still there in the image, okay? Um, the next way to do it that would be proper is to go directly into Fusion to do it. So the way you get into Fusion, and not making a Fusion clip, but a Fusion composition, just place your cursor right over the clip you want to zoom into, jump into Fusion, and I've already pre-done this to speed this up, but apply a transformer effect that was set to 10, and then a letterbox node set to the resolution of the timeline to get it to fit the resolution fine. That's all I did there. But you can see the media in one, that's the important thing. We have access to all of the pixels there. So when we zoom in, we are zooming in with access to all of those pixels. And then the final correct way you can do this is using the brand new reference fusion composition. I did a tutorial on it recently about using screen replacements for it, but Mr. Alex Tech also has a good one about reference fusion compositions because you can use them in power bins as well, which is something I hadn't thought about. So this is the exact same setup. It's just a reference fusion composition, which you can see has access to the full clip resolution. So those are your three right ways. Compound clips. Let's talk about zooming into compound clips. Now those are basically nests with multiple layers. So if I just option shift drag this up so we can get multiple layers going on this sheet of music, I right click and I say new compound clip. The moment I hit this button right here is important because the moment I hit create, Essentially what I did, it made a compound clip, but you can see in the inspector, the compound clip resolution is taken from the current timeline resolution. And because there's layers in here, if I go to my video tab and I punch this up to 10, we're soft. <laughs> it's not looking good. You see our fusion example over here, lots and lots of detail. This one over here, not so much. It's because it's baked it down to 720p and then scaled it up to a zoom value of 10. Now there's a, two workarounds and I want to show you those as well because maybe you need to use compound clips for some reason. The first one is before you create the compound clip, that's the result of this one, what I did is I right clicked on my timeline, timeline settings, and I changed this custom uh, to a custom timeline resolution of the 7008 by whatever that is, 4000 something, uh, and then created the compound clip. And then if you do that and you scale up to 10, you're good. Because you can see over here, the resolution of the compound clip is that native 7008 resolution. One other way to use compound clips, if you're not using layers and just want to use zoom across a cut, 
that Photo Joseph pointed out to me is actually really clever is inside this compound clip, which you can see this compound clip is 720p. It's not nothing special. I didn't do the crazy changing timeline settings before. If I open this one in timeline, this has an adjustment clip on top of it that's doing the scaling. So a lot of times you might want to have like multiple images that are zoomed across time. So within in this one, because there's no video on video two or three or no, no other imagery on two or three, I'm just using the adjustment clip here. This works so that I can scale. I've got my first zoom uh, parameter set to 10 and it zooms across the cut and we can see it does not get soft back on our 720p timeline. Adjustment clips are kind of like adjustment layers in Photoshop where you can apply effects to them. And I'm gonna apply one on top of this clip right here by hitting X for X marks the spot that just places in and out points so I can three point edit directly from my effects library. Uh, you find your adjustment clips over in effects and then effects. So effects, effects, and then adjustment clip is right here. And the way you can three point edit this is just by dragging over to the viewer. And you'll see there's a place on top option there. Once you hit place on top, It'll do what it says. It'll stick it right on top. Now, a lot of people do their scaling and adjustment clips because it's easier to see where they have transforms applied and, and apply effects to those instead of the clips themselves. But you'll notice as soon as I apply a zoom amount here of 10, we're back into that soft and, and really sort of mushy land compared to where we were before, where we could see all that pixel detail. So this is the big reason I do not suggest using adjustment clips if you have a need access to the higher res material on a lower res timeline. So just to cleanse our palette, this image right here is our basic transform zoom blown in image, directly zoomed in on the clip. This one right here is another one you don't want to do. This one has the effect applied, the open effect, resolve open effect, transform. So if you use this one, look, it's no good. Compared to this one, I would definitely take just doing it in the inspector as well as any sort of preset that someone might be selling out there or one you create yourself on the Fusion page. That's exactly what this is right here. I just created a transform from the Fusion page and I set it to a value of 10 and it just doesn't look good. I mean, would you rather have this or this? Now at least you know what's happening with those pixels underneath the hood. Now, I do want to point out, I am a fan of Magic Animate, and Jquip has great zoom tools as well. They're really, really convenient. But just know it's not really easy to get native access to pixels that came from the Fusion page when you apply them as an edit page preset. Hey, I'm Chadwick. This video is actually sponsored by myself and any one of you that's attended a class I've taught or a Zoom one-on-one -on -one that's all about DaVinci Resolve. You guys are awesome. Now, if you learned anything new today, there's lots more of this sort of stuff that's free here on the Creative Video Tips YouTube channel. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.